Hey there YouTubers, JB Coins here with another video. Uh, this is along the lines of our educational videos, I guess, but uh, it's also kind of um, uh, something that if you're going to start, if you're getting started in collecting, or even if you've been collecting a long time, like I have, um, I wasn't really aware of these coins until I met Camera Girl. And Camera Girl was into these coins. And... Um, if you're going to collect pennies in particular, this is the short one of the shortest series coins that were made, so it's easier to get the um, the entire series um, than a hundred years of you know Lincoln's, for example. Uh, they only made these coins from eighty six, or excuse me, eighteen fifty six to eighteen fifty eight. Um, in 1856, uh, they decided to go from the large pennies, which were about that big, uh, they, that's, they're known as coppers, uh, they, they were quite a bit larger, and it, interestingly enough, they were having the same debate back then as has been going on for about the last five or ten years now, uh, that the pennies cost too much to make. The mint was losing money making the pennies back then, the large ones. So they decided that they needed to find an economical way to make the pennies. People didn't like them. Uh, most people were uh, turning in their Spanish and Mexican um, copper uh, in to turn, and they were getting silver. Uh, the silver dollars were more popular. So people didn't really want the pennies. They made them smaller. That was their solution. Make it about half the size of the, of the large copper. Change the uh, composition of the coin and uh, make it more affordable. So in 1856, they came out with the Flying Eagle scent um, and they changed it to an 88% uh, percent copper and 12% nickel, uh, which is interesting considering we all know that the, uh, the later pennies were a higher percentage of copper again. Um, the, the coins themselves in 1856, depending on which resource you check, um, there are either 2,000 or 3,000 of the 1856 uh, known to have been minted. Um, interestingly enough, 1856 being the first year and that new mix, they made three different production runs in the first year. You know, I mean, Every 700 or 800 coins, they seem to be changing their mind. So this is an 1857, uh, 1857 for example. Uh, what we have here, uh, these are camera girls. Uh, we have an 1857. Um, interestingly enough, when we got it, it's marked 1857, 1857, and we'll talk about that again in a little bit. But we have that, and we have two 1858s. Uh, in 1857, they went from two to three thousand to seventeen million four hundred and fifty thousand uh, this year, and in the 1858s, they made uh, twenty-four thousand six. Excuse me, twenty-four million six hundred thousand. All of these coins were made at the Philadelphia Mint. They didn't make them anywhere else. Um, the 1856, needless to say, is extremely rare it's extremely expensive even these are not cheap um, to get one in nice condition uh, you know you're talking as it says here $185 $120 uh, you know there there but you can you can get into it and get um, a pretty complete set um, you know for a lot less than if you were to go out and buy for example all of the uh, Indian heads are all of the Lincolns. You can get these for a lot cheaper total spend, but you're going to wind up having the entire set. Now there's five, uh, basically uh, there are three variations of this coin. There are, um, or excuse me, there are three variations of the 1856 because they were three different batches. There are, um, there's uh, one 1857 and there are four 
variations on the 1858, and you see two of them here. Uh, this is an 1858 large letter, and this is an 1858 small letter. Now, within the large letter and small letter, they also had two variations of the reverse side, where you have a combination of um, high leaf and low leaf on the back side on the wreath, which is really hard to see uh, in any detail here. Well, yeah, that's not bad. Here you can see that is the high leaf. You can see the points coming up towards the C and the T. On the other coin, let me flip it over here, if we can see it. Excuse me, that's the one with the high leaf. No, that's the one with the low leaf, sorry. <laughs> that's the one with the low leaf. The leaves are close tight to the, to the wreath and not up towards the letters. This one here, and I know it's hard through the plastic, but you can see right here by the T um, and over here by the C that the leaves come up away from the wreath. So that's considered a high leaf. You can actually have both of these backs with both of these fronts. So there's four different coins. Okay, so you know four different four different coins there, uh, and then the 1857 one known variety, 1856, another one. So you five to six coins to get all of the p potential combinations of what's there. Now, in order to do that, you have some pretty serious money involved if you're going to try and get some of the, the uh, varieties of these like we just talked about because there are, uh, in the resource book that I just recently got, um, which prompted me to finally get around to getting the Flying Eagle video done for you guys. There are nine pages listing 16 var uh, varieties of these coins, uh, four of which I just talked about by talking about these two with the, with the large and small letters and the combinations of the backs that you could have. But you also have, in the 1857, you have multiple double dies uh, on the uh, obverse. You have um, uh, repunched dates. You have a um, um, couple of different repunched dates, actually. Um, you have also, um, which wouldn't look like this, there was an obverse clash die where these were stamped over uh, a seated Liberty 50 cent piece. Um, so within this series, even though it's only, th you know, four years or three years, uh, you have coins that can, can easily, uh, go as high. The, the highest valued one is a hundred thousand plus is what it says in the book. Um, but the, most of these, if you have one in MS 65 grade, MS 63 grade, I'm just going to use MS-65 because it's just a consistent number to use. None of these are that. Um, but an MS-65, all day long, these different errors uh, and varieties of these are 5, 6, 7, 20, 25,000. Now, yeah, there's the one for 100 grand plus. But even in this condition, there are coins, uh, you know, you can see what it says here, you know, when, when we got them, but, uh, those coins have gone up in value and in, in those grades. And if they have an error on there, uh, they, they are worth considerably more than what we paid for them. Uh, and the interesting thing is that the, um, the high leaf, low leaf issue on these, on these 1858s, uh, that didn't come out in the reference books until this new reference book that I got that was just released in the last couple of weeks. And I just got it a couple of days ago. So when we bought these, they didn't have any idea um, that those variations existed. So um, the combination of what we've got here, you know, 
this uh, this one in particular may actually be worth quite a bit more than $120 that shows on the face. Uh, and it's definitely worth way more than $44 for the one that's on here. So, um, you know, kind of a cool series, like I say, because you've got, you know, 16 different things that you can look for on three years. And you can get them anywhere from, you know, $50 to 100 grand plus. Um, but it's, it's kind of a neat hunt. And, uh, you know, finding these uh, uh, in this condition, uh, Camera Girl actually has a fourth one that she's going to be probably selling uh, on eBay. Um, she hasn't made up her mind yet. Uh, part of what we're now holding off for is uh, now that we have this reference guide telling us of these errors, um, we've talked about the older gentleman with the microscope. And, uh, you know, in order to really tell whether this, these two have, um, or this one even, has the significant errors that drive the price way up, you really, for, for those, you really need lots of magnification. Uh, with just a, a five power magnifying glass, I can't see it. Uh, camera girl can't see it. If you're younger, have better eyes, have great magnification, you might be able to find those. But man, they're they're a great coin to look for. Lots of fun, um, and uh, all in just three little ears. So hopefully you guys find this interesting. Hopefully it kind of whets your appetite, uh, turns you on to something new. If you're doing a a coin roll hunt and you're looking for wheat pennies and all of a sudden something with a bird on it flips out now you know what it is and you know that it's really worth a lot of money so uh, until next time hope you found this interesting uh, till next time uh, continue to like share and uh, subscribe JB coin signing out